here's the thing, you know what? Until I was exposed to truth mm -hmm. and understanding mm -hmm. and some of my best friends on this earth mm -hmm. um, that, that, that helped me see the error in the way that I was raised and it redefined the law of first truths for me. Yeah. Um, man, I, 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 but you know what I was? I was open to listening. Yeah. We were open, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I was open. Absolutely. I was open and listening and going, man, if I don't understand something right or if I've been taught something or if, or if at, at one point in time I was like, God, I don't even like, I don't like the hate I have in my heart. I want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was open to listening. I was open to changing. And I think everyone needs to be open to that. Everyone needs to be open to changing. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 74. 74. Of the Sales Wolves Podcast. Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. Sales Wolves, Sales Wolves Podcast. I am your host, <laughs> Tyler Harris. We have Joseph Caldwell. And I'm we host are too, by the way. Just... co hosties. <laughs> co hosters. Co hostesses. Co hostesses. And we are the Sales Wolves. All right, today we're not yes. talking about anything that has anything to do with sales except your freedom to go sell. Um, and before you, and before gun we, sales. gun sales, it could be gun sales. Um, before you just tune us out or write some really awful thing on uh, on the page, or before you judge, let us uh, let us get into that. Are, are those brass knuckles? They are brass knuckles. Hmm. That's what kind of party it is. It's, a, it's a great. It's a great world where you can carry <laughs> brass knuckles around. And defend yourself. So, um, so before we we talk about uh, a couple of things we want to talk about today, we're going to talk about guns. That's a polarizing topic. All right. Sure. Uh, we're going to talk about liberty. But uh, but for those of you who listen to us and you get some stuff out of us, and and this may be a shocking a shocking episode for you, um, I want to talk a little bit of the changes that I've gone through. We're we're I'm just going to ask you straight up, Tyler. Were you raised to? Um, appreciate homosexuals and accept them? No. No, neither was I. I was not raised that way. I was raised to condemn them. Mm -hmm. um, I won't even tell you how I was raised. Yeah, it was yeah. it was, it was, was not Lake right. of fire, all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Where's that at? I've been looking for a lake of fire for a long time. <laughs> I haven't found that some bitch yet. I think yet. it's in Columbia, probably. Yeah, I think it is in Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. I think the capital's in it. <laughs> it might be in D.C. <laughs> Columbia's um, the city, not the country. Please don't. Right, hate. the city. Don't hate on us. Yeah, don't hate on us. We, we, love, <laughs> we love Central America. <laughs> though I, care, though I care about that country more than that city. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do. Which I do. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but but I wanted to ask that top because here's the thing. You know what? Until I was exposed to truth mm -hmm. and understanding, mm -hmm. and some of my best friends on this earth mm -hmm. um, that 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 helped me see the error in the way that I was raised, and it redefined the law of first truths for me. Yeah. Um, man, I, I, I. But you know what? I was. I was open to listening. Yeah. And I think, I think people get so full of fear and they get so bought into, the, I was taught this and this is the way it is and this is what, this is what some book says that uh, has been retranslated 25 times in a bunch of different languages and um, has gone through, uh, it may not say exactly what you think it says, but, uh, and I'm not going to get on that topic because anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but when it comes to that specific topic, we were open, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I was open. Absolutely. I was open and listening and going, man, if I don't understand something right or if I've been taught something or if, or if at, at one point in time I was like, God, I don't even like, I don't like the hate I have in my heart. I want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was open to listen. I was open to changing. And I think everyone needs to be open to that. Everyone needs to be open to changing. Um, what's another polarizing topic that, uh, that I've, that maybe you have had to change on or, um, well, I mean, not that I've necessarily had to change on, but I had a recent, um, podcast that I did, uh, the badassery podcast, um, where they talked about a whole lot of gender issues. Oh my God. Um, and it was really the first time that I had ever really discussed those things. And 
quite honestly, it was the first time I'd ever really thought through a lot of the issues in gender. And I brought up the fact that I have a podcast called The Breadwinner Podcast. And the fact that the second you say breadwinner, 99% of the people think, think male. male. They think And it. why is that? And those things go back so far that we've just accepted that that is what it is, but it can change. It can change. But it takes, again, being open to that change. So, Tyler, I mean, being raised as a male in the South, and I know you moved around because you're a military family, yeah. but being raised as a military family, family. Yeah. Um, the macho, the, the, it's almost like it's an ingrained into our society that men are first and women are second class. Sure. I mean, and here's the thing, don't get mad at me for saying this, but I really don't, I feel like the race problem in America that the media touts on a daily basis falls so far short of the real problem of gender inequality that, uh, that it's disgusting. And what, what brought this to my attention, what made me start thinking about it? was my three little girls. I was about to say having a daughter. I have yeah. three daughters. For sure. And and I remember my son was born and he's the he's the last one. So it, it, you know daughter, 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 son. And I remember him him falling down or he was in a sport or he's crying or something. And I was like I was like, man, you don't cry like a little girl. And I and I immediately I got hot all over and I went, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, and things just started popping in my head and going, that's wrong. That is wrong. Yeah. Why would I say that? It, it, like it's a bad thing or, or, and I started catching all those things that had been said to me and all those things that I had been taught or, or that just society has pumped on us like that. Yeah. And I started seeing the real problem of gender inequality. Yeah. I started seeing that. I started, I started understanding in business environments how, how I've seen women given the cold shoulder or talked to like they're not an equal, but a, but a piece of meat, mm -hmm. um, or, or there's a pretty face yeah. and it's just, it's an absolute atrocity. So, but you know what I was? I was open. Yeah, yeah. I was open. And so we have a couple guns laying right here that you've probably noticed. This is a 40. That's 40. You got 45? 45, 45, man. And, uh, and this is the one I keep in my console of my truck. Mm -hmm. And um, if anybody wanted to take my truck or harm my family, I would, I would uh, absolutely use it. And I would use it with deadly force. Um, because what? That's my right. Mm -hmm. It's my right to protect my family. It's a, it's a, it should be a God-given right in every single country. And, uh, and so what are the things that I like to talk about and that we, we did a thing on with our organization re recently was um, on the Declaration of Independence, this country, and, and how it was started. And a lot of people don't even know. I don't even know. I, I, I left a message for everybody the other day, and it was 1,337 words. 1,337 words and what that means to them. And, and I can almost guarantee you that nobody knew when they heard that. They, they had no idea. It was July 4th, and they still didn't know hmm. what 1,337 words meant. But I can tell you that in 1776, when... Um, you know, people think about July 4th and it being a celebration and parades and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But in 1776, when, when, um, when, when those 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were sneaking on July 4th into a hot ass basement mm -hmm. and, and in hiding, they were sneaking together and Thomas Jefferson showed up and he had pinned what would be the Declaration of Independence and they all got together as the Continental Congress. They had to do it in hiding mm -hmm. because the British had hired Hessian soldiers and put a price on every one of their heads. They couldn't be seen in public. They had, get, they, had, they had in that document, it said that they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. And that was so that we could declare independence and base a government based off of a republic governed by a body of laws, which we've lost it even to this day. We've lost it. But as they got together and they talked about it, they made over 86 corrections and deleted 500 words. Hmm. Over 86 corrections, deleted 500 words. They split under cover of dark to leave there. You know, they didn't sign it then. Most people don't even know that. It wasn't signed on July 4th. Did you know that? I did not. I did not know. I did not know the day. It did. It was not I signed on July 4th. Day. They actually went back and, and, and Thomas Jefferson put it all back together. And at the end of the day, it was 1,337 hmm. words. And when they got back together, it was August the 2nd. August the 2nd is when they got back together and they all signed it. And everybody goes, put your John Hancock right here, right? You ever heard that when they're talking about signing something? Put your John Hancock right here. Do you know why they do that? If you look at the Declaration of Independence, 
John Hancock signed it two or three times as big as he had to. He signed it ma like his dwarfs everybody else's. And as he was signing it, and, and he was signing like that, he goes, I hope King George can read this without his bifocals on. <laughs> and he triples the price on my head. <laughs> That's Because they knew what they were doing. Oh, they yeah. were all signing their own death warrant. Mm -hmm. They were signing their own death warrant. And, uh, and so the reason we have guns laying here is because that is a staple of a free society. Yeah. Because there is nothing that puts a 90-year-old, 90-pound woman on the same playing field as a six foot five would be killer rapist, except the personal firearm. It puts them on the same level playing field. And all the stuff going back and forth today in the media about, about how much firearms are responsible for this death and that death. Yeah. God, TJ was looking up some numbers and, uh, and you are 10 times more likely to die of post-op complications on simple surgery than you are to die of a freaking firearm wound, okay, uh, uh, from getting shot. I mean, there's so many. Heart disease, man, you're, you, what is that? That's like a thousand times. You're a thousand to 1200 times more likely to die from heart <laughs> disease than you are from a gunshot, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, so we people, should outlaw forks. We should outlaw forks, man. People quit shoveling that sugar in them, man. <laughs> and quit. I mean, my gosh, yeah. it's it's kind of comical. We're going to march on Hershey, Pennsylvania. We're going to march. <laughs> yeah, where's that? Who's who's doing that? You know, who's 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 the getting funny, mad at Procter and Gamble? You the know, funniest thing to me is that every time it becomes this big uh, this big deal in the media, every time anti gun, every time there's a huge march, every time there's a big protest. Gun sales go through the roof. They go through the roof. Every time the president of the United States, or every time someone, the Senate, anytime there's any bills, anytime there's anything even being talked about, gun sales go through the roof. Yeah. So it's literally like reverse psychology. It's almost For like sure. if they were just to say, like, hey, guns are actually now going to be not a big deal you at can, all. You can buy them at Kmart. Then literally, gun <laughs> sales know, will Walmart. drop. Walmart. Actually, it's, you can buy them. It's Walmart. so crazy. And the right. idea, and the idea that the criminal activity involving guns is somehow going to stop somehow because it stop. becomes harder to get. <laughs> like I criminals are criminals are criminals are criminals. I mean, Tyler, I have literally <laughs> talked to people from Australia, Greece, yeah. France. I have talked to these people. Germany, where stuff is, where the laws are stronger mm -hmm. against gun control. Look at Chicago. Yeah. It's one of the most. It has some of the strongest gun laws in the country yeah. and some of the worst. Crime. California. California. Yeah, it's like one of it's, the toughest. It's one of the toughest, and they have more crime. So, so <laughs> the thing is that the reason I believe that we should be able to own not just a gun, mm -hmm. but any firearm or weapon known to man yeah. is because if our forefathers could not have had guns, and I mean the same ones that their British government had, mm -hmm. guess what? We never would have been able to throw off British oppression. Yeah. We never would have been, this country never would have been born. And so it was born on those laws. I believe that, that and, and, and I'm sorry if I offend you, but I'm okay having an assault rifle. Why? Because the criminals can have them, because they get them by any means necessary. And if I ever have to defend against them, I want superior firepower or at least equal. And guess what? Our government can have it. <laughs> And, and if and we're do. ever under oppression and you go running, come run into my house. We'll be all right <laughs> for at least a little while. Bunker. <laughs> but does that not make sense, man? I just don't understand why people won't think about it. But the well, reason like, I started if you think of, with the other you stories. Think of modeling, like you're going to model something. Like let's model, let's model um, the war on guns. Like what? The war on drugs? How's that working out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how's that working out? People are still getting drugs. Yeah. And people will still get guns. That's right. It's and actually, it'll make it to where the ones that will get the guns are exclusively the ones that you don't want to have them. That's exactly right. <laughs> so if, you, if they start taking it from the good citizens who use proper gun control, who have proper safety, who teach the proper things. Mm -hmm. If you take them from then, who are the only people that have them then? Mm -hmm. The bad guys. Yeah. The black market will never go away. Somebody will be able to get a hold of anything they want, any time they want. Yeah. And, and look, I am all about protecting our children. But why was, why, why, just riddle me this, why 
are we now having to protect our kids in school so much more than in 1950? What has happened between then and now? Nobody ever got shot. Dude, when I was growing up, too, this is, this, so t 30 years ago, in, yeah. in elementary school, 30 years ago, I was 12 years old or whatever. Did you paddled. What? Paddled. Oh, I got that. beat. I did get beat in school, yeah. That's I did. Awesome. I got I got the snot paddled. And then I would get a spanking when I got home for yeah. getting a spanking at school. It's like an but, appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> when the principal paddled me, I was like, I shouldn't even cry because I know the real one's coming. <laughs> I know the real beast. He's warming you up. Yep. But, uh, but, but man, what what has changed where we where we're so fearful and we're so and we're so hateful? Because I know we're gonna get some hate stuff mm -hmm. because we believe in guns, believe in carrying guns. I believe in every man's right to and every woman's right to protect their family, protect themselves. And people say, well, yeah, but you don't need this kind of gun. Well, does someone have it? Well, then, well, then I need it yeah. to protect. Whatever firepower is out there, I believe that I have the right you to know, have it. But it goes back when what you're just asking, what's changed in, the, in schools, what's changed with kids. It goes back to what we talk about so often, which is personal responsibility. Yeah, there's not any. Parents, parents have the lack of personal responsibility to discipline their children or to raise their children, and they push it off on the education system to be able to raise their children. Who and then they blame, supposed and to then be. they blame the education system right. when their child. That's that. That to me is is the beginning of the end. Quite frankly, yeah. Right. Hmm. Jill's really loud. She is like you were in the interview. <laughs> She's in an interview next She's door. She's in an interview next door. We haven't soundproof this studio yet. Yeah, yeah. Yet. You know, it's probably not a bad idea to just soundproof that wall because yeah. we don't ever get sound off the other ones. But, yeah. but anyway, man, do you have anything else to add to that? That's why I wanted to talk about like, hey, I was open. I was open to changing. Yeah. If you could show me a country around the world where their government doesn't oppress them and the citizens don't have access and don't push them around, don't tax them what they want to tax them, they're not scared of 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 uh, citizens getting tired of the BS of the government. Mm -hmm. You can show me one around the world where it works right. Don't point me towards Greece. I was just there. Those citizens are are furious with their government. They wish they had their guns back. They would throw off that oppression in a heartbeat. Um, man, it, and, and you go to countries around the world, the taking a person's God-given right to protect themselves and their family away is, uh, is ridiculous. And guess what? This country wouldn't even be here had it been that way back in 1776. Well, and I think, I think this comes from a good place with us because of the fact that the majority of the um, stuff you see in the media, the, the majority of stuff you see on social media, the, the majority of just the conversations that people can witness or participate in are usually the extreme one side or the extreme other. So it's the extreme, I got a thousand guns and I'm gonna show them off and I'm gonna talk about guns on every single post and this and that. And even Sean Whalen to a degree is, yeah. talks about it a lot. Yeah. And then there's the other extreme which is so anti-gun and yeah. so cr and, crazy and, and towards that, on that side, wow. yeah. And then they'll come back with hate towards that. But I kind of think, I mean, and, and you may be a little bit more on the gun side than me. I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I don't really care. Like, I, like, I, like, I, like as far as, like, I'm not extreme about it, yeah. but I'm going to have one. And I'm going to have one with me, like, when I travel. Yeah. And, like, back in those first few years when I was on the road all the time, like, it would just go with me from the car to the hotel, back to the car every single day. And yeah. just because you never know. And, and yeah. that's my whole thing is, like, you never know. You never know. Like, I hope I never have to use it, obviously. Right. But if I did, I would be sure glad that I had it. Sure. Like, that was a funny thing. Think somebody commented on a post that I did the other day because it had a gun in it, and they said, "Well, that wasn't necessary." I'm like, "Well, it's never necessary until it is. Until, <laughs> until it is." <laughs> and that's and that's kind of the whole point of be, having the freedom to be able to protect that's yourself, right. and not the freedom to go out and be an idiot about it. No. And you don't have to be like super flashy about it, but like just mm -mm. at the end of the day, like the ability to protect yourself. Most and protect people your don't family. even know I have guns. Yeah. Most yeah. people don't even know that I have one in the truck. It's not like I ever pull it out yeah um but unless i need it man yeah. no but it's a super important super important topic in the idea of being open to change because most people aren't open to even having a conversation no less op True. open to the thought of their actual mindset being changed over something yeah um, but like we always say oh and, I, and, then, and i'm sure somebody's going to get on here 
and they love us for having guns, but they hate us. They call us, you know, they'll probably say something terrible about us because we don't disapprove of a gay lifestyle or, yeah. or whatever. And it's not even a lifestyle. It's who they are. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing I learned just just having great friends. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and then somebody's gonna get on here and approve of one thing we do and one, and I really don't care. All I care about is be open, mm -hmm. be open. I'm, I'm open actually to having a discussion on why and, and looking at proof throughout history from the history of man, mankind, I'm open to uh, giving up all guns. If you can show me any proof mm -hmm. that, it, that it actually works in a civilized society, but it, you don't have it, you can't do that. But you can get mad at me. You can get mad at me and say terrible things about us on the. I think it all boils down to coming from a place of love. Like in, in, any, in any conversation, like if you come into a conversation from a place of love, you're not going to have this immediate stance oh, yeah. where I can't even hear what you're saying because I've already formed these viewpoints. Like when right. you come, when you legitimately come at it from a place of love, then it op it just puts you in this posture of openness yep. to be willing to at least figure out like I don't get it, but I. I'm getting that you get it. Right. And by doing that, like it, it'll, it'll start slowly infiltrating someone's mind and they're able to make this decision one way or not. Because yeah. that, the whole thing with that, even, even me in saying that, as I was saying that, I was like, wait a second, no, it's not about changing my mind because it's not about like what's right or wrong. Right. It's just about being open to understanding like now I understand why you think that. It doesn't sure. necessarily mean I have to think it. Right. But when you come at it from a place of love or compassion or whatever you want to say, that gives you the ability to have that at least understanding that we, we may not believe the same things, but we can certainly have a conversation about it. And I can understand why you would think that way. I can also understand why I would think this way. Neither is right. Neither is wrong. But yeah. just a place of understanding. It's just, sure. I think a lot more would get accomplished if people had just this basis of coming into every conversation from that compassion and just wanting to understand why the other believes the way they sure. do and not just a why as in why like condemning why right. like why could you possibly but just like no why like where did that stem from because legit, what did you somebody may watch this and, and their child may have gotten into a gun drawer and shot themselves or a little yeah. kid and look I ain't even getting in an argument with that yeah. person Dude, I can see, I understand. Sure. That would rend my heart in two. Mm -hmm. um, and I could see where they're coming from. Man. Like, I would just want to curl up and hold that person and tell them sorry. Yeah. But, uh, but TJ, TJ got beat up by a gay gang one time. Are you serious? <laughs> and, and ever since then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious. I was like, what? I was getting ready to go, I would come hug you, but that may bring back terrible memories. I don't know. <laughs> His face was like, I did what? What? Did what? <laughs> yeah, but you oh, never know man. what somebody brings, what baggage yeah, that they bring what into they've a been conversation. Through, right? so, <laughs> so anyway, super polarizing topics and you know. It is but I'm it telling is. you, man, the tree of liberty, true freedom. Thomas Jefferson said it. He said from time to time, the tree of liberty is watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants. So, Brian. Well, guys. It's, it's its manure. That was the next <laughs> line. But <laughs> The manure of life. That's what we are here at the Sales Wolves <laughs> Podcast. Just this will help you sell more. Just swear sprinkle well. it on and we'll help you grow every now and then. <laughs> just sprinkle some of us manure. -ish. Tyler's just pure shit, so he'll he'll help you grow a lot. Okay, help you so grow a lot. Manure. -er. <laughs> All right. With that, this is episode seventy-four, of the Sales Wolves Podcast. Right. I am Tyler Harris, Joseph Caldwell, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ah!